Hi, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogboat333, and welcome back to Hearts Find 4 Kaiserreich as the Qing government for now. Now, last time we hopped in together, well, our hegemony completely imploded on itself. And now we're trying to pick up the pieces. Um, shoot, I had a guide I was looking at. But I kind of remember what to do from this point on. Or I think I do at least. So we'll just... Hmm. The basement of Shady Beijing Bar, traditionally used as a cover for the revolutionary activists, a strange coalition of individu individuals dedicated to um, Wu Paifu and his rule over China is gathered, versus Pu Ji, the emperor's brother and the general in the army, one of the few non Jili generals allowed to command significant numbers of troops. Next to him sits C.J. James Yen, a leading intellectual and head of the NCERA. Across from him sits Jing Xilan, an army officer who was defected to the Zhili side in the Third Zhifeng War, but has since become disgruntled as lack of advancement under Wu Pai Fu. Realizing that they are unable to beat the Zhili clique on their own with their limited military resources, the plotters decide they must ask the leader of a neighboring warlord clique for assistance. After much deliberation, they choose... Yan Zhijiang and Shangji. Oh, there we go. I'm going to pull up the... Got to make sure. Oh boy. As if things couldn't get any worse, the Sichuanese government recently informed us that the drought has, that has gripped their province for the last month is now a full-blown famine, with social order breaking down as food becomes increasingly scarce. Subsequently, they have petitioned our government for aid. While we do have more pressing concerns to attend to, this province is of critical importance to our regime, and ensuring the loyalty of our government will be key in uniting China. Well, let's get to it. Governor Yan has replied to our request in his usual charismatic but wily matter, showering gifts and charm upon the young messenger we sent to the extent observers would think him as another friendly old grandpa. But beneath that mask, the men asserted his dominance and cunning, treating the noble just like many others who have come before him asking for a favor. His jovial demeanor thinly veiled his calculating nature as the decades reigning model governor read his mark. By the end of a meeting, as our representative quickly relayed a message home to his fellow conspirators in Beijing, the terms were unambiguous. Yan Zhijiang already holds a distinguished, if distrusted, position as governor within Wu Paifu system, and he has a little, little to gain backing our risky proposal unless we offer him something greater, far greater. Though he took pains to never outright say it, it's clear he expects full and autocratic powers if our plot does succeed. Hmm. Furthermore, he expects proof that our plot succeed. That is something more than a pipe dream of spoiled aristocrats out of touch with political reality. Our messenger, despite playing the role of a naive appeaser, was quite perceptive. He warns that although Yan is extremely ambitious, his ambition is tempered by his pragmatism. Still, it would be hard for a man like him to resist the tantalizing prospect of national control. As we craft our responses, it's critical we reel on our target. The government can be mercurial as he is calculating, will likely... And what we will say will likely determine his response. Well, that's interesting because the offers I have, I don't see. Um, I don't think it matters necessarily if we get right or wrong. We'll play on his ambition and emphasize his future role as the master of China. Probably shouldn't have clicked that one either. But here we are. Yan accepts our offer. After some deliberations, Governor Yan Jijian has announced his support for our cause in a humble message dedicating his resources to, of himself, his army, and his province to the common Chinese national unification. Beneath his outwardly humble demeanor, however, it is clear that Yan is preparing to leverage his status as the muscle of our planned coup to ensure his own leadership of a nation, swapping out Wu Pai Fu for himself. Whether or not he will be any better than the previous times we have served under, and whether he shall share 
his newfound power, we'll have to wait for another day, as the preparations begin. In northern Shangji, in the neighboring Shangji province, Yan has assured us that he will enlist the support of Feng Yuzhong and his Guomingjun. Nonetheless, he also emphasized that these radical traitors are nothing more than a means to an end. His own provincial army is amassing to our west, preparing to strike north out of the Yellow River to quickly connect with our own forces. Already, scouts are being sent out to eastern Shangji and southern Shangji to destabilize his yearly control over the areas. With these coups underway, the die has been cast. Either we will rid Beijing of usually traders once for all, or we meet our own doom in their hands. Let's work. Let's hope this works out. So I'm curious, what's the difference between Shangji and Shangji, pronunciation-wise, with the two O's or two A's? I don't know if I have anyone who can uh, correct me or inform me, but if you could, please let me know, because I'm curious. Go charismatic, and we'll go. Oh, can't go anything else. Hmm. Wu Paifu's old friend Zhao Hengji has just won the pr recent provincial election in Hunan. While this initially may might seem good to us, Zhao's electoral victory also means that he's reaffirmed his commitment to his federal values, placing what he thinks are the best interests of nation over his true loyalty to Wu. Following your principles, really? Shit. Hmm. Unusual troop movements have been reported from Shangji province over the past few days. It appears the troops are preparing for some sort of military action on our border, with our informants reporting that supplies and equipment are being stockpiled near the mountain passes out of Shangji. Further west, in the adjacent Shangji, Feng Yuzhong and his Kuomintang have also been reported as active. Once more, the traitor general dares to threaten us along with his cohorte of socialist agitators. Like ghosts of our past, the two willards once more come back to haunt us, having been bested by Wu Paifu's genius a few years ago during the Fourth Jiafang War and the KMT's Northern Expedition, respectfully. An attack from them in these turbulent times to try and regain their lost lanes in the north and west would not be out of character for the two, perhaps emboldened by the collapse of allies to the south. Still, this is brazen even for them. Both had seemed content to lick their wounds behind the natural fortresses of the Taihong and Lu Hyang Mountain Mountains provide, festering in their prophetic squalor for decades in relative peace. Something definitely triggered their response, Cao Kun insists. It, it has to be. Although his poor treatment during his imprisonment by Feng Yuzhong no doubt contributes to his paranoia, perhaps he's onto something here. What's going on here? Dispatch more spies to investigate this. I have a feeling that we might... Yeah. Great news, sire. It appears Zhong Kewu has defeated our ally Yan Seng in Sichuan. It's a major loss to the Zhili clique of province and industry poor and militarily overstretched. Should they join any over opposing faction, we will crush them. That's not great news at all. What the fuck are you talking about? Damn. Damn! The southern Chinese fan province of Sichuan is currently experiencing terrible farming. The famine is struggling to save its people. They have requested the Legation Council authorize the Legation cities help them open up new sources of grain until the land can recover. Many experts on Chinese politics, however, warn that the money we send for famine relief could just go directly into Sichuanese warlords' pockets. Let's see how this goes. We'll see. Meanwhile, we have uh, Anthony Fantana over here. Peers of various agricultural industries are still yet to actually deliver any of the food they've collected in Beijing. Sats of grain sit rotting in warehouses across the cities as the peasantry of Sichuan starve and Yangtze's situation grows ever more tenuous by the night. By foods to fight as the situation get things moving. By threatening to fire the heads of various ministries, Wu hopes he can light a fire under their chairs and push them into action. As always, however, this comes at the cost. We would have to spend political capital we can spend elsewhere in the government on reassuring the various patron networks to backing the ministries that these threats are not actually serious. Or are they? <sighs> Pressure them to keep working. Might be able to sway them a little bit there. If we do that. Hmm. A few more groups within the assembly loathe these 
Harmony Association is usually more than the NCERA. Comprised of naive intellectuals, they frequently protest the warlord nature of our government and claim that we're simply corrupt kleptocrats more interested in robbing the peasantry than developing the nation. Following our province to aid Jeong ki -woo and stop the fame and gripping his province, however, they publicly praised our surprising display of compassion for the peasantry of China. Nobody in the HA is really sure if they are naive enough to believe we're doing this to actually help the peasantry, but the sport is certainly better than their usual loud protests. Thanks, I, I guess. I'd actually up this a little bit more in the long term. Ooh. Our informers have discovered a, a dangerous plot. It appears Yang Zhejiang and several Manchu princes, reformers, and traitorous generals are attempting to overthrow the Zhili clique and install an imperial dictatorship ostensibly under Puyi. With the combined forces of the Shangxi Provincial Army and the Guomengjing amassing on our borders, it's essentially dispatched any of the fifth columnists within our government before outside forces strike. Any show weakness will invite further challenges from the Northeast and the South, dooming our efforts we've made for decades to stabilize our nation. A quick decisive strike against the Chechen and Shangxi is the only way we can assert our authority in the face of Sung Xuanfang's disaster. We march on Taiwan. Rest these plotters and prepare to invade Shangxi. So much for this cool mechanic that we we're about to use. We're going to war. Uh, push so far are going decently well. <laughs> Bizarre conspiracy has been revealed to Wu Pai Fu. Apparently, a group of disgruntled Manchu princes and Gili reformers and Geely generals have bit in clandestinely plot and overthrow the Geely clique and restore Puyi to a position of power. A member of this plot grew disgruntled once the foreign backer reneged his support and instead came to Wu, betraying his erstwhile allies, who has already been dispatching police to raid the safe houses where the plotters have been meeting, and arrested a confused Puyi, who was apparently unaware of any plot in the first place. President Kao Kun went before a stunned assembly where he announced the charges before announcing his resignation in shame for failing to discover the plot. With the end of the Qing Dynasty, Marshal Wu Pai Fu will be temporary, act as a temporary national protector until a new, a new government can be assembled. Need to check to see. Um. So. The, okay. So the. All the guard units. That's just a normal infantry. I think that would be de uh, defeated. Uh, we'll get. We'll just. Uh, we'll let this event. What is this? Civil War in Sichuan has ended, and our allies in the armament department have defeated by, been defeated by the officer department. Fleeing possible retribution by Zhang Ke Wu, leadership of the former ruling clique of Sichuan has arrived, seeking to serve armed forces, with hope of one day perhaps be returning to their own provinces. Old friends are always welcome here. I don't know if we actually. I'm gonna just let this run for a little bit more. As we keep invading in, even if... Oh, well, there we go. And here we are. Details are unclear, but following presumed coup attempt in the Forbidden City this morning, Marshal Wu Pai Fu emerged, arm in a sling, but otherwise standing tall. Walking down the stairs, he stopped for a few seconds with reporters, who had rushed to the scene as Pui, bound and guarded by a group of soldiers, shuffled out. Kao Kun, the democratic elected leader of China, and I were savagely attacked by the Emperor's thugs. No doubt supported by outside powers, he began, stating directly, staring directly into the camera while flashing in his face. It is clear that these opposition elements wish to undo the progress we've made, and after their betrayal today, the assemblies declare them traitors. China will be a republic once more, free from foreign domination. Long live the republic. While most of Ajili's clique's political affairs are handled by the Harmony Association, the military wing of the clique still holds a fair bit of influence over political decision-making. They will never assume direct control and generally work with Harmony Association, but occasional disagreements are not unheard of. Do we get a coalition with the Harmony Association then? I don't know. Oops. I was gonna... I gotta grab my water bottle real quick. Um, that reminds me. I got a fun story to tell. 
I was streaming the other day. And for those of you who've never seen a Mr. Dog about 333 stream, first off, you're missing out. Go ahead and check it out. Link should be in the uh, bio, uh, one of the description boxes below. But I do a little thing where I just kind of lean into the, my chair and sit down. Well, I ended up breaking one of the wheels on my chair. So I moved to, uh, just now, to uh, move my chair over, wheel it over so I can grab my water bottle. But since one of the wheels gone, I almost fell over. But... I saved myself. I saved my ass. Oh shit, and we just started getting army experience too. With Mandry aristocracy removed its political force, the question now remains, what to be done with Manji generals and our military? The obvious answer is imprisoning them, but then what about all Vigili generals that sided with them? Several are quite skilled. Removing them from our officer pool would have consequences. Still, it would ensure loyalty going forever. Only purge the Manchu nobles. The rest can be rehabilitated. Let's go for it. The Manchu royalist plotters dealt with. We now need to turn our eyes to reconstructing our government. It won't be easy, but a new set of laws need to be drafted that rectifies the errors of the Bayan Constitution and ensures China will be properly guided through these turbulent years. We need to create a legitimate government. So, a new constitution. Let's rush down a new constitution right now. I think that might be the best play. The Jing Dynasty overthrown. We must now set about building a new constitution for our regime. While we'll still be guided by the Zhili, many are hopeful for the return of Republican rule to Beijing. Hmm. Following the overthrow of the Qing Empire, Wu Paifu assembled a group of constitutionalists and legal scholars to help him create a new government for China. Holding the city of Beijing gave him some little legitimacy, and the military power he possessed gives any documents he chooses to adopt force behind it. While well, with the legitimacy the question of legitimacy solved, the question pressing question Wu had to answer is the form of the constitution. In order to save time and expedite the centralization of China, he could simply adopt the last non monarchist constitution of China, nineteen twenty three one created by President Cao Kun. This, however, is rife with loopholes, opportunities for executive abuse, and other problems. One of the scholars he has assembled could draft their own constitution, those who take time and political capital. Uh, let's draft a new constitution. We're going to take the hit in the short term, but I think it's going to help us out. Draft a new constitution. Let's cross the river over here. As we hadn't done that already. Okay, what do we got here? First issue confronting Wu's constitutional scholars is the level of power the executive should possess. It's unsaid, of course, that Wu and Vigili clique will guide the executive through these trying times. Once China's unified, there's a general understanding that Wu's government will gradually transition to some form of democracy. With all that being said, a strong executive guarantees stability while empowered legislative bodies get better at generating political capital and clout. Stability or production efficiency. Let's ensure that the executive has strong authority. Just try to tack into there right now. It's not working. Okay. And they took that, which not entirely surprising, I'll be honest. Next issue facing Wu's conventional constitutional assemblies will have autonomy for the provinces. Previous Republican governments came into conflict with the provincial administrations, and this is, in part, led to the current situation in China. Strong centralization on the other hand ensures that orders issued by Beijing are followed better. Keep it centralized. P 
push over here. You flank him there. There we go. For many hours, we've hunched over, spent a hunch over Dask and arguing over the legal minutia. We have a new constitution. When the Jili clique will ensure that the new government is stable first for years of its existence. But once China is reunified, many scholars hope that China can begin to peace transition into a real democracy. Now all we need is a president. We'll have to figure out who that president is next time, though, because I gotta leave it there. Thanks always for watching, gang, though. Like the video if you like, dislike if you didn't, leave me comments, feedback down in the comment section below. Uh, check out various links down in the description box below, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.